Hello everyone and welcome to the class. We have been doing a lot of things in Japanese. We have done verbs, nouns, expressions, new vocabulary every day, lot of kanji characters. Today also we will do something new, uh, some new forms of verbs, some new expressions. But before that we will try to do our uh, assignments that I had given you. Just check your assignments and see whether what you have done is right or not. Choose the correct reading for the kanji characters. Now, we have done a lot of kanji characters in our previous lessons and you have to choose the correct one. The reading is given over here in hiragana as well as in roman. So, well the first one is as you can see in green ue which means on top or above or up. The second one is again in green shita which means down, under or below, beneath. Then naka which means inside or passing through or center. Then you have han which means half and then we have Dai, the reading given is Dai, it also means Oki which is big. So, I hope you got this right. Then of course, match the kanji characters in column A with column B. So, the first one is Daigaku, Densha, Kyo, Akarui, Ashita, Oki, Jugatsu, Mikka, and the last one is Suitachi. So, I am sure you have done them properly and correctly. Well, now in our previous lesson, we did telephone conversation, informal and formal. How you would talk on the phone to a friend, one, how you would inquire in an office at a reception about someone. If you want to call someone over, you want to know whether the person is there or not, how would you call on phone. So, we did some part last time, this time again we, we are going to do some formal phone conversation. So, let us see what it is. You can see this picture over here, two people are talking. Moshi Moshi of course, we did. Moshi Moshi is hello only on the phone. Remember it is not hello as you would say how are you to someone. Hello, how are you is not Moshi Moshi. We have done those expressions earlier over here only Moshi Moshi which is to be used on the phone for hello. Now, the formal way of telling who you are is Arunto Moshimas. Now, Vata Shi Wa Arun Des. You can also say this on the phone Arunto Moshimas. I am Arun or Arunto I mas. I am called Arun. So, please a better way would be Arunto Moshimas on the phone and then if you want to call someone say maybe your friend you want to inquire whether the friend you want to know about is in office or in that place or not, what would you say now? Mariko san onegai shimas. So now, onegai shimas. Onegai shimas is actually a request. It is, it means please do as the verb says. It is a request. You make a request to the listener 
to do as the verb is saying. Onegai shimasu. There are other ways of saying, other ways of requesting as well, but for the time being we will do onegai shimasu. Now, when you are asking for someone, you say Mariko san onegai shimasu or X san onegai shimasu, whomsoever you want to call over on the phone. So, now what should the answer be of the receptionist? Well, shou shou o machi kudasai, please wait for a minute and you go and and the receptionist goes and checks, the telephone operator will go and check whether the person is there or not. So, it is shou shou o machi kudasai. So, well then what happens? The person goes and checks and comes back on the phone and says something. Sumimasen, Mariko san wa kyo yasumi desu. Mariko san wa kyo yasumi desu. Yasumi is a holiday, she is on leave. Mariko san wa kyo yasumi desu or Mariko san wa kyo imasen. Mariko san wa ima Imasen, she is not present at the moment. And then what is the reply of the person who is inquiring? Wakarimashita, I have understood. Wakarimashita. And then something else is given over here in blue which is Shitsure Shimas. So, well Shitsure Shimas has a lot of meanings. One just shitsure, just shitsure means shitsure, just shitsure means I am, I am sorry, I am leaving, I am sorry, I am, I am late, any of these meanings could be there. For example, in a meeting, if you come late and you want to enter, generally you just cannot barge in and you just sit down. You would say, I am sorry, I am late and just make some kind of an action or gesture. Well, shitsure is one word which you can use with shimasu. Shitsure shimasu, I am sorry for barging in like this or I am sorry for intruding. Sometimes when, a lot of times, shitsure is also used when you leave a meeting earlier than the others. Well, still people are having the meeting and you want to leave, you have some work or for whatever reason and before leaving you would say Shitsure Shimas, please excuse me, I am leaving a little earlier. Another place where you generally would use uh, Shitsure Shimas is when you enter a Japanese house. Generally when you enter someone's house, you apologize before entering and you say Shitsure Shimas, I am sorry I am intruding like this, I am taking your time. And when you leave, then you would say Shitsure Shimashita. Shitsure Shimashita. Shitsure Shimashita. That I have taken your time, please forgive me, I am sorry. So, this is a very nice expression to know, to remember when you are in Japan dealing with Japanese. It is a polite expression, Shitsure Shimas is used in place of Sayonara. Sayonara I am sure you all know, Sayonara is bye bye in Japanese and uh, the Japanese people use Shitsure Shimas in place of Sayonara, it is more formal and polite. Well, onegai shimasu is a convenient phrase used when making a request and generally the person whom the request has been made to will say hi, wakari mashita, I have understood. For example, it can be used in a lot of places, for example, say if, if you go somewhere, you call a taxi. What would you say to the taxi man? Well, you would say, please drop me to a certain place. So, 
place made onegai shimasu. Please drop me to this place. So, place x made onegai shimasu. It is a request. For example, if you are thirsty and you want to have water, so you go to a restaurant and you ask for water. So, simple mizu onegai shimasu. So, these are these are situations where you can use onegai shimasu for requesting to do something. And over here as I explained to you earlier, shitsure shimasu is an expression used when entering someone's house or entering a room where people are already there or entering or leaving a meeting when it is in progress or you are late, you want to apologize for being late or excusing yourself from somewhere, from a meeting, from a table, from a conference anywhere and also it is a parting expression instead of sayonara, which is commonly used in Japan. And the gesture you make is you bow and you say shitsure shimasu, sorry I am leaving. Now, you can also say shitsure shimasu for example, in a situation like this where you are leaving office at 5 o'clock and people are still working in office. So, while you are leaving them, you want to excuse yourself and you say sorry I am leaving a little earlier than you. So, shitsure shimasu. So, this gentleman over here can say shitsure shimasu and the person who is here staying back can say well mata aimasho or mata ashita aimasho. This expression we did in the beginning which means let us meet again tomorrow. Now, last time we also did ikimasho, if you remember, ikimasho. which means let us go. And when you say let us go, you one, you include yourself in the activity and two, you also decide for the listener. You do not ask for opinion, you just decide. So, ikimasho is what we did last time, tenran kai e ikimasho ka. So, well if you just put a ka over here, question word ka over here, it means shall we go. Now, you are, you want the opinion of your partner, you want to, you are asking your partner and not deciding for your partner. So, it is shall we go instead of let us go. Tenran kai e ikimashou ka? E ikimashou. E is exactly hai actually. And ikimashou. Yes, let us go. And you have tenran kai is an exhibition as we did last time. You have some other words also for you, some new vocabulary. Undo kai, sports day. Bijitsukan, art museum, cafeteria is a cafe, doubutsu en is a zoo, hakubutsukan, a museum. So, well, you have these new words for you, you can practice with instead of tenrankai, you can say undokai e ikimashou ka. Bijutsukan e ikimashou ka, cafeteria e ikimashou ka, doubutsu en e ikimashou ka, hakubutsukan e ikimashou ka. And you can of course add the name of the person and ask him directly and expect an answer. Now, we will do something new. I ate bread and eggs today morning. Kesa pan to tamago o tabe mashita. There are some new things in the conversation. Listen very carefully to the conversation. Kesa nanji ni okimashita ka? Rokuji han goro okimashita. Nanji ni gakkou e kimashita ka? Shichiji han goro okimashita. Jaa, 
朝ごはんを食べませんでしたかいいえ食べましたよパンと卵を食べました牛乳も飲みましたよ毎日パンと卵を食べますかいいえ毎日食べません時々食べます So well, the conversation is again between two people, A san and B san. I'll read it out to you once and let us see how much you have understood. Kesa nanji ni okimashita ka? Rokuji han goro okimashita. Nanji ni gakko ekimashita ka? Shichiji han goro kimashita. じゃあ朝ごはんを食べませんでしたかいいえ、食べましたよ。パンと卵を食べました。牛乳も飲みましたよ。毎日パンと卵を食べますかいいえ、毎日食べません。時々食べます。So how much did you understand from this? We have done quite a few things over here. Almost all the verb forms over here have been covered. Well, there are a few new words like goro, yo, yo is a particle, to is a particle, and toki doki, another new word, which we will do in this lesson here. Kesa nanji ni okimashita ka? So, what we can do is we can quickly Go through the translation and then explain what we have to do later. What time did you get up in the morning today? Around 6 o'clock. What time did you come to school? I came around 7 o'clock. Well, then you did not have breakfast today? No, I had eggs and bread for breakfast. In fact, I also had milk. Do you have eggs and bread every day for breakfast? Not every day, sometimes. So, well, this is the translation, may not be exact. Translation, but this is how you would say in English. So please don't try to translate it word by word, the meaning just might change. Now practice answering with toki doki. Anata wa maishu ega omimasu ka? Maishu you have done means every week. Anata wa maishu ega omimasu ka? Iie. Toki doki mimas. Toki doki is sometimes. So, well, let us see. Anata wa maishu niku o tabemasu ka? Iie, toki doki tabemasu. Well, another example for you. Anata wa maishu kaimono o shimasu ka? Iie, toki doki shimasu. So, over here, when you are using this verb shimasu, Shimas will come over here. If you are using mimas over here, mimas will come over here. So please try to do it as is given in the example. Tegami. Tegami is a letter. Anata wa maishu tegami o kakimasu ka? Let us see what is the verb over here. Kakimasu. Kakimasu is to write. Iie toki doki kakimasu. In the end, we have kabuki and dorama. Kabuki is the traditional drama form of Japanese where it is similar to our, uh, I would say, kathakali because only male characters perform in kabuki all the time. Female characters are not there. All female characters are also performed by male characters. So, that is one speciality of kabuki and uh, this is a traditional Japanese drama form. So, well, let us see what it is. Mimas. Anata wa maishu kabuki mimas ka? Iie toki doki mimas. Over here, we will practice negative form of the verb with Toki doki. So, anata wa mainichi ega o mimasu ka? Iie, mainichi mimasen. Toki doki mimasu. So, well, 
あなたは毎日映画を見ますか This you can replace with any name, for example, Tanaka san or Imoto or Oka san, any of the vocabulary that you have done for person, then Ega o mimasu ka? Mainichi Niku o tabemasu ka? Niku o tabemasu. Sake o nomimasu. We did tegami just now. Tegami o kaki mas. So, in this manner you can you can change anatha for names over here any of the vocabulary that you have done. You can use any noun over here like niku, sake, ringo, tegami, kudamono, yasai any of these that you have done and over here you can change the verb according to what you are doing over here with the noun and ask a question and answer. Now, the options are given over here. Anata wa mainichi ega o mimasu ka? Iie, mainichi mimasen, toki doki mimasu. So, well, you can ask like this and you can answer either in mas form or masen form. Of course, over here masen form is given, practices for masen form. So, you can use masen form over here with toki doki. Now, you have done this exercise earlier where you ask preference A this ka B this ka. If you remember noun 1 this ka, noun 2 this ka. This is exactly what we have over here. Anata wa mainichi ega o mimasu ka? Toki doki ega o mimasu ka? So, toki doki is here in the question over here. You can answer as mainichi mimasu, you can choose, you can say mainichi mimasu or toki doki mimasu. Now over here mainichi instead of mainichi, we will just now do it there as well. Instead of mainichi, you can replace it with maishu, maitsuki, maitoshi. Maishu is every week. Maitsuki is every month and Maitoshi is every year. Of course, with Maitoshi you cannot say Maitoshi ega o mimasu ka or Maitoshi ringo tabemasu ka. Maitoshi kuni e kairimasu ka. You can ask your friend Maitoshi kuni e kairimasu ka. You can also ask Maitsuki jikka e kairimasu ka. So, any of these words you can use with nouns, with verbs and make sentences, make conversation. These simple conversations will help you in doing long conversations easily and comfortably without faltering. So, these help a lot. Try doing them at home with a partner, with someone. Now, we have another practice for you over here. If you remember, we did kara and made with time. Kuji kara, goji made, rokuji kara, shichiji made, or shichiji kara, hachiji made, whatever exercise you are doing, whatever you are performing, activity you are performing. So, from a certain time till a certain time, a certain activity is done. Now, over here, we will do kara and made, but from a certain place to a certain place. So, we have place 1 kara, place 2 made. Now, what do you want to do with place 1 kara, place 2 made? Now, place 1 kara, place 2 made, nanji kan, 
かかりますかまで、何時間かかりますか ?For example, カンポルからラクナウまで何時間かかりますか So now you would say 何時間かかりますか How long does it take from Kanpur to Lucknow? But walking or car or train or something else or cycling probably. So well, we need to tell by what mode of transport it takes a certain number of hours to get from one place to another. So over here you have a lot of uh, in this exercise over here, you have some pictures. You can see the mode of transport and you can try to tell how long it takes from one place to another. So, for example, Kanpur Kara, Kara, place 2 Made, Lucknow Made, Kuru Made, we have done de if you remember in our previous lesson kuruma de hikoki de fune de by some mode of transport so well place 1 kara place 2 made whatever mode of transport de nanji kan nanji kan kakarimasu ka how long does it take from place 1 to place 2 to go by this mode of transport. So, well, let us see what it is. You can see a picture of a train over here. Well, Kanpur kara Lucknow made densha de nanji kan kakarimasu ka. So, this is a question you can ask, you can inquire. So, well, the answer would be Nijikan des. Kan you have done earlier. Kan means span of time, period of time. Nijikan des. Now we have another picture for you. There is a bus here. Same question. Kanpur kara Lucknow made. Bus de. Nanjikan kakarimasu ka. Well, Sanjikan des. Then we have what mode of transport? Well, we have a cycle. So, jitensha kanpur kara Lucknow made jitensha de nanji kan kakarimasu ka. So, of course, the fastest would be the train, then the bus and then the cycle. So, let us see how long it takes. Rokuji kan desu. So, this is how you could tell by what mode of transport how long it takes. Kakarimasu. Now, there was a word goro in our conversation and goro means approximate, around, but one thing is important, goro is only used for time, approximate time, word goro, only for time. And one important thing with goro is, okay, before that, well, juji. Goro, ju ichiji han goro means 5 minutes plus minus around 11.30, around 10, 10 o'clock or 10.30 or 1 o'clock, 5 minutes plus minus approximately around this time is goro. Now, one important thing you have to remember with goro is, if goro is to be used with time like this. For example, juichi ji han goro, then particle ni, which generally follows time, will not be used. For example, watashi wa rokuji ni okimasu. Watashi wa rokuji ni okimasu. Watashi wa rokuji Goro oki mas. So, please, when you say rokuji ni okimas, it is exactly at 6 o'clock. 
when you say Rokuji Goro Okimas, then it is around 6 o'clock and you will notice that it is either Ni or Goro and not both together. As you can see over here, when time expression is followed by the suffix Goro, it indicates approximate time and only indicates time and not approximate duration of time, only for indicating time. When Goro is used, particle Ni will not follow time as I just told you. For example, Sanji Goro and Suitachi Goro, it can also be used for exact date. Now, you can ask Nanji Goro Nemaska and whatever time is there in the toke, you can tell or whatever time you sleep, you can say Juichiji Goro or Ichiji Goro or Ichiji Han Goro Nemas. Now, we have another picture over here of someone getting up. Nanji goro okimasu ka? What time do you get up? Approximately what time do you get up? Someone cleaning and nanji goro soji wo shimasu ka? So, what time do you clean? So, this is how you can use goro instead of ni for approximate time. Now, there was another particle, a new particle for you, particle to, not to please, particle to. Last time we did soshite if you remember, which joins sentence 1 with sentence 2 like this, okay. soshite sentence 2 and it is a conjunction, used as a conjunction, unlike English, it begins a sentence. Well, over here, to is also and, but it joins one noun to another. For example, in a class, all of you are there, well, A san to, B san to, C san to, D san number of students, all of them are listed and are present in class. So, this is how you would you would use particle to over here. The example is kocha to kohi wo nomimasu. I drink tea and coffee and also ringo to mikan o tabemasen. I do not eat apples and oranges. So, this is how you would use to only thing with to is that you have to name all the objects, all the nouns present over there. For example, in class you have to name all the students present in class or if you place a few things on the table, whatever is for example, on my table you have to name all the things with to. Now, look at the picture and ask your partner what they did yesterday, last week day before and practice negative form of the verb, which we have not done so far. So, well, you can look at this picture and see what is happening. These people are sitting and they are watching a film, someone is sleeping, someone is crying and well, someone is watching. So, kino ega o mimashita ka? Ie mimasen deshita. So, the answer is because he is sleeping, Ie mimasen deshita. This is a cake. Keki o tabemashita ka kesa today morning. Keki o tabemashita ka Ie tabemasen deshita because it is still here, so tabemasen deshita. And then we have this cup of tea, it is full. So, well, kino kohi wo nomimashita ka? Ie nomimasen deshita. So, this is how you would 
use negative past with senshu, sengetsu, kyonen. With these words, you would use past and past negative. Well, now, yes, there was one more particle in the conversation. There are two particles which we have already covered in class, which comes at the end of a sentence. We did ka, we did ne, a confirmation particle. Now, today we will do particle yo. Like ka and ne, this also comes right in the end over here. Now, why, why and when do you use yo? Well, you have it right here. Yo is a particle of assertion and comes at the end of a sentence. It is commonly used in contradictions, in assurances and warnings indicating that the information provided by the speaker is new to emphasize information which the listener does not know and it is important to remember that particle yo should not be used in formal situations and also to seniors most of the time especially to teachers, to, to people who are senior to you in age or in rank. For example, over here you have ikanai hoga ga ii yo, it is better that we do not go, muri shinai de yo, do not stress over work. Now with yo also, the intonation is very different. It is stress on a subject, it could be stress on anything and stress on particle yo as well. For example, ima nanji desu ka, you have done nanji, ima nanji desu ka, ima rokuji desu yo, so that yo is very very strong. Of course, it is, it is rokuji. So, the stress is over there with yo. Now, we have kanji, we have been doing kanji all along in class. This is a little different as we have done the word toki doki. You remember this, I am sure. This means nichi. This is do. And this whole thing we did for time. So, well, you have you have done this character earlier. Nichi, I am sure you remember, as I just told you, this and then this over here. And if you just put this again, this is a repetition of this kanji, toki doki, toki doki. I will write it down once again. You can see the stroke order now. Toki, doki, toki, doki. So, this is the word we did. Only the kanji is coming over here for toki, doki. Now, we have another word, jikan. This word also you have done. You know the word. You have seen the kanji also. Well, next time when you just see this kanji, this character in red over here, over here, you will know what it is. It is jikan. So, I will draw it for you again. G we did just now as toki. Now, another reading is G. One reading we did just now was toki, another reading is G. G kan. G kan. So, once again, G kan. G kan. This is how you have done it earlier. Now, you do it like this. Remember it as this character G kan for time. Now, some very simple kanjis today. Very, very simple new characters. Two new characters for you. One is te, which is hand, te. And the other one is ashi, which is foot. So, I will make 
te for you first, te like this 1, 2, 3 and 4, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, you will see 1 is like this, 2 is a little longer than this and then the third one is the longest of them all and you have it here a straight one. This is te or te. Then we have another one for you ashi, ashi, ashi like this make a square, make a line ichi, make another one like this and hito, ashi. See how te is made, you have 1, 2, then you have 3 and then 1, 2, 3 and 4, te and then ashi 1, 2, 3, then you have 4, 5, 6 and then the last one 7. So, now you can see that this is a 7 stroke character and te which I made over here is a 4 stroke character. You can remember it like this as well a 4 stroke character and a 7 stroke character ashi. Now, as we have started doing hiragana from our previous lesson, we did a i u a o last time, today we have ka. Ki and you can see the stroke order is given very nicely. Ki, ku, ke, and this small thing when you lift your pen or you lift your brush, this is what comes and it gives a nice look to the character k and then ko ka ki ku k and ko this is all together so that you can compare the strokes as well now there are some new kanji characters well i'll go over it very very quickly toke aida machigai the meanings are given over here in the right column. Then maniau, maniau is when you are getting late and you are able to make it that is maniau. Ashiato, tariru, tebukuro, tegami. Then this is vocabulary, kesa, asa, toki doki, ban, yonaka, kakarimas, kusuri, doubutsuen. Hakubutsukan, kabuki. Of course, now it is your part, you have to do all the assignments now, it is not very difficult. Some words are given, then the readings in Japanese are given. There is only one correct reading, you have to tick the correct reading. Then, of course, as we did previously, kanji is given and you have to get the correct reading of the kanji character. Now, some sentences are given and you have to fit in the correct kanji which goes with the meaning of the sentence which is the most appropriate kanji character. So, well we will keep our lesson till here today and do whatever we have to do next time. Enough for today, practice all of this at home and learn your vocabulary and we will continue next time. So, Mina-san, 
また明日会いましょうありがとうございます Thank you